Hi, I'm Chip Rogers and welcome to the AHOA Educational Experience. Our topic again this week is banking, lending, financial arrangements with, with those who are lending money in the hospitality industry. And with me today is three attorneys, Timmy Hallam from Manette, Phelps & Phillips. Thank you for being with us. Delighted. Ankar Sharma from the Sharma Law Group in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you. And Kirtan Patel out of Atlanta with Kumar Prabhu Patel and Banerjee. Thank, Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about what someone, a property owner, can do, what they need to look for, how they can be prepared uh, for a situation when maybe the finances are beginning to weaken a little. Let's start this show today on the other side and, and figure out what is it that banks or lenders are looking for when they uh, begin to, to look at their portfolio and, and try to recognize loans that may be in trouble. What are the, what are the warning signs for a lender? Well, the obvious warning sign is if the borrower stops paying their <clears throat> stops paying their monthly payments, the mortgage payments. So the first thing they will do is notice if you haven't been paying the mortgage payments. The second thing that'll happen is you typically will have to provide monthly financial statements to the bank. And if they see those slide, if they see that you're no longer hitting the debt coverage ratios, if they see that you have sort of paid the mortgage, but the odds are you're not going to be able to pay the next one, that will be the next tipping point for the bank. Are there market indicators they're looking at as well? Uh, the, 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 your obligations to provide the NOI, that cover, debt coverage ratio is remaining current, as well as if the franchisor has informed the lender that franchise payment has not come in, uh, there are some additional marketing conditions that lenders get directly from the, from the uh, Franchisers. But, but Chip, if your question is, will the lender read the newspaper and decide the market is going bad and therefore they ought to look at otherwise performing loans, I think the answer is not. My experience is, and I've done over half a billion dollars worth of uh, restructures in the last year, my, my experience is that the banks are not out there looking for trouble. So if your numbers manage to pass muster and you're paying your mortgage, no matter what's happening in the general market, the bank's not gonna come looking for trouble. Well, we've heard horror stories from, from people who have properties, they're making their payments on time, but now they've got to refinance their loan. And it's time, you know, the renewal time is up and a bank just simply says, you're a good customer, you've been making your payments, but we can't afford to do it any longer. I mean, are you hearing these type stories? How prevalent are they? And what do you do in that situation? I think the biggest problem is when it comes to refinance, that typically the value has dropped and the amount that lenders are willing to loan has gone down. So you might be trying to refinance an 80% loan based on a four-year-old value, let's say it's $100 million, just to pick round numbers, and now you have $75 million of value, but you have an $80 million loan, and the only people in the market making loans want 60% loan to value coverage. So you now need 50 million of, or 40 million of cash just to pay off your old lender. Refinancing is a problem in a falling market. Kirtan, are you seeing this happen? Yes, um, as, as, as Timmy has said, the, the valuations is where the issue is. Now, um, lenders, some, some lenders are um, carrying the loan and, and, and extending it. Uh, and these are, and, and you know, when it's not just you have falling market values on the on the on the on the, um, on the uh, owner side. You also have the stressed financial market too. Be, the the uh, the banks are stressed on their end too, so they don't have the ability to come and lend either. And uh, and that that is that is squeezing people on all sides. Now we have had some relief, at least on the small small business side. The SBA has increase the uh, SBA lending limit by five million to five million dollars from two right. million to five which allow which brings in a lot of different uh, types of hotels into the mix but uh, it, it all goes back to valuation if the valuations are not there um, it is going to be tough um, and, and and to add to that is another set of complication is if your note has been taken over or sold to a third party, that maturity is going to be extremely painful. Right. And, and, and we are seeing that, and, and we're working with a lot of clients who are dealing with uh, loans which have been sold. 
to or in, uh, pooled and sold to third parties. And some of these third parties, their incentive is they want to be real estate owners. They don't really care about working with you. So what you're referring to are the, the loans that were made in the last three to five years on a five-year window type loans. Those are becoming mature. Right. And those are the one now becoming toxic loans because they are they are not backed up by the value of in the property. I think those are the one market conditions that you are referring to. Is there anything you can do? You're, you're, you're a good customer. You're making your payments. You're still bringing in the revenue necessary to satisfy the current terms of the loan. But the valuation, as you said, has become a serious problem. And what can you do? You know, there, it's very difficult to find something to do because the banks have strict rules about loan to value ratios. A bank cannot make you a 120% loan even if you could pay it just because the value of your property has dropped. And so unless you can find either someone else to put in money as equity, even if it's, you know, soft equity or preferred equity that's more like a loan than than uh, equity, but unless you can find money, you're gonna be out of luck. And if your loan was securitized, of course, they're not gonna make you a new loan. I mean, the bonds were intended to be for a finite period of time, collect their money, distribute it, and go home. So if your loan was securitized, you have no choice but to get a new loan, and that's gonna be contingent on value. There are four solutions that primarily we have been able to work with on the behalf of the hotel motor owners. One is a short-term extension of loan. Yeah, you can that extend. That is one, one year type extension by paying a, a nominal 1% fee, mm -hmm. perhaps a little bit more payment on the principal down, 5%, 2%, or agree to make at least monthly principal down payment in addition. The second solution have been to bring additional collateralization. That is additional guarantors, uh, that that can that can uh, take over the the uh, the bank is guaranteed payment by either additional collateral assets of the same owner or friends and family owners. So that's the second solution. The third solution has been more in the area of uh, the the owners arranging what we call, for better, lack of a better word, a friendly sale. In, the, in, in that situation where uh, the value has really gone down, but convincing the short sale process that we have been able to use as part of the solution is, its loan is mature, it is due, it is not going to bring the value uh, it has. So arrange a short sale, get it approved. Uh, right. And so those are the kind of solutions that we have been able to bring. And, and additional collateral can sometimes uh, be very valuable, but you need to make sure, I mean, I'm doing one right now where we've just put in another 10 million of collateral unrelated to the property, but you better make sure then that you can pay the loan because now you've doubled up on your risk. You not only have your hotel at risk, you have maybe everything else you own, including your house at risk. And so you don't want to do that lightly. Well, are banks and lenders, are, are, are they allowing that type of cross collateralization, particularly if it's another property you own? Uh, the one that I'm doing now, typically they will they will do it if uh, it comes as collateral for a guarantee. So you need to have it be an independent obligation because uh, for technical reasons that we don't need to go into. So typically what happens is you come in with another, either the principals um, or somebody else, they guarantee all or a portion of the loan and they give the additional collateral as the security for that guarantee and then the bank typically will be able to do it. Okay. And most likely it is going to the second or third position because most properties do, uh, do have a first loan. So additional collateralization really comes from second or third positions that the right. banks are willing to take. Well, we need to take a quick time out. We've got a lot more to talk about. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. I'm Chip Rogers for the AHOA Educational Experience. And again, joining me today, three very learned attorneys, Timmy Hallam and Ankar Sharma and Kirtan Patel. A lot of banks have gone under. And that's, that's bad. <laughs> uh, and sometimes a property owner has a great relationship with the small hometown local bank. And now all of a sudden their loan is owned and the bank is now owned by a large multi-state bank. How does that change your relationship and what do you need to do as a property owner 
to reestablish those relationships with, with the new bank owner? I think it depends on whether the new bank is continuing to operate the branch you've been dealing with with the same people. If they've kept the same people in place and just changed the name on the, on the uh, outside of the building, then you can continue your relationship. If they haven't done that, then very often they've transferred your loan and a bunch of other loans to a different department that takes care of loans of that type, which could be located anywhere in the country. And uh, it's not easy to figure out how to penetrate that system, but you're going to need to start with your local branch <clears throat> and asking how you get in touch with a live person at the now servicing it entity. Continue to make your monthly <coughs> payments. That is your best relationship. Well, to the extent that, that, that these loans can be, um, I mean, these loans are serviceable or, or you are able to make those payments, you do so. But if, if, you're, if, if your question specifically goes to who do I need to talk to because I'm, I can foresee that in the next three, six months, I need, I need some help from the bank. Um, generally, if a bank is taken over by FDIC and it's sold, it's under a lost share. Right. Uh, agreement with the FDIC, and that comes with its own own bag of um, uh, issues. Well, but at least they will work with you. They, they, you if, if you're able to do what we talked about before, give them a compelling story, put put a good plan together. They they will work with you. I've found people with lost share on that on that end work. Uh, uh, if it's a banking institution that has been taken over by another banking institution, to be working a lot more. Uh, with you and lot uh, and being a lot more lenient and favorable towards you, whereas if, if the loan has been sold in a pool to a private individual, private investor, or a private group that is not a banking institution, then then we then you are in uh, then that could be very challenging uh, because some of those some of those loans were bought for the pure purposes owning of owning real estate, right. and and they will take your real estate called Loan to Own, where you <laughs> simply buy the loan with the express intention of foreclosing as soon as that loan goes into default. And, and, and they buy these loans for pennies on the dollar? It, it depends. Actually, I think the FDIC has been getting much more than the pennies on the dollar that people originally thought would happen. You know, back in the RTC days in the right. 80s, people paid 10 cents on the dollar. I think now people are paying 60 or 70 cents on the dollar, but even so, a private investor buying loans is buying it for the spread, and that means they're buying it to own it and try to resell it for whatever profit that they can make. Well, not, I'm sorry, not to, not not to not to bore everybody about the the uh, pennies on the dollar and and and, uh, and what somebody has bought your loan for. Of course, it's important if somebody has bought your loan that you know what they bought it for. Maybe that will tell you what your what your negotiation mm -hmm. negotiating room is. Right. Um, but 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 it, but. The market has turned. We're, 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 we can go back all the way to 2007 September, when 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 that day, when beautiful autumn day, when everything went to hell, and from that day onwards, everything has been going haywire. And if you if you look at things have changed from that day onwards. So um, the loans that were pooled and bought in 2008 2009 they paid pennies on the dollar, maybe 30, 40 cents, because there was a public-private partnership that FDIC was promoting. Now the loans are being sold to just private individuals or, or, these, or these large groups, and they are paying 70, 80 cents to, to a dollar today. When you pay 70, 80 cents to a dollar, there's no room to maneuver right. or negotiate. Right. But what is their profit? Their profit is 100% or nothing. And when, when that's the number, then, 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 then that's challenging, problematic, and, and may require a lot of restructuring on your own part, sometimes with the help of the court. Explain loss share agreements. This a bank, one bank purchases the assets of another bank, but it's backed up by the FDC, because this is a term that is used quite a bit. But I'm, I'm sure that a lot of sure. people don't really understand what that means and what it means in the context of negotiating. Well, a loss share with the FDIC, when, when a bank, when a bank fails, FDIC finds another bank to buy their assets. FDIC and the other bank says, listen, I don't want to take this toxic waste. So FDIC says, you know what? We'll back it up. If you lose, we will cover 60%, 70%, 80%, whatever the number is that they negotiate and agree. And by the way, that number has been coming down because the market has started to improve. 
Right. And of course, it depends on the purchase price that the buying bank paid for exactly. the failed bank. Right. And, 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 and so that loss gets covered. In terms of negotiation, why, it's, why it, it helps is because you have FDIC involved. I'm not saying that FDIC would step in and tell the bank to do something different, but there is a public entity somewhat involved in this, and, and that kind of helps because the bank, the, the loss is not their direct loss. There is a little bit of room to maneuver within the loss where you can take a little discount and, and hopefully save your property. Although I've just dealt with one where the, the buyer of the loan wanted to work out the loan and restructure it with us, but it took a very long time. It was complicated. There was a mezzanine loan as well as a first. And the FDIC kept saying, why don't you just foreclose? Let's just be done with it. So the FDIC is not always as patient as you might mm -hmm. hope for. Sure. To, to bring it to the AHOA membership, what we are discussing perhaps, is the new opportunities that have come up in this restructure of loss sharing agreements and, and the ability of larger even funds, investors bringing together funds just to purchase, to own or own the loan and then sell the property. The, for OHOA members, these are new opportunities to own new properties, old properties at significant discounts. So I think that's where our, our uh, educational experience is, is a little bit more helpful to our, to our audience. And that brings me to my next question, which there's this perception that uh, banks are not lending money. If you would like to borrow money to purchase a hotel, there's just no money available. That may have been the case a year ago, two years ago. Is that the case today? Uh, my experience is there are loans available for the right property, but the loan to value ratio is not what it used to be. And you can expect to put in a personal guarantee for a portion of the loan. So the terms overall are not going to be the terms you saw in the freewheeling 2005, 2006 period. And mostly where people can't make the, pro the, uh, the cut is that they can't come up with enough cash to hit the loan to value ratio. That's the hardest part. But, but, but I will say, say to your question, Chip, that the, you don't even have to go a year or two years back. As of November of last year, or October of last year, when SBA came out, at least on the mid-market level that I can talk about within, within the 2 million to 10 million ranges, uh, when SBA came out with its new guidelines, and when, uh, when uh, SBA went to a 90% guarantee, a whole lot of loans started getting done. That time, there was a lot of refinancing being done. Then FDIC came up and said, under this 504 program, we'll be able to do refinancing. So now, and, and, and that refinancing doesn't stop at five, ten million dollars. Uh, it can it can do a lot more with uh, with a debenture, which which is the five hundred four piece, being only five million dollars. Right. So the so the market has started to open up. Absolutely, there's low valuation, but we, as of the last two two months, three months, we have started to see a lot more activity. And I think what we have also started to see is banks letting loose a lot of its notes, assets, REO properties, also. So we have started to see a lot of activity in that, in that sense. And Chip, if, even in 2011, there are non-recourse loans against commercial properties that are being restructured, that are being done even today. It's a question of the size of the loan, the restructuring project, or a new construction. I think if we distinguish it that way, perhaps uh, for each segment, there are different kinds of loans that are available. Sure. So it, it, if you're a, a property owner in 2006, you got a loan, it's maturing right now, what are your expectations? Because what you got in 2006, is, I, I would suspect, is going to be uh, considerably different than what you're going to have an opportunity to refinance for in 2011. If you want to save your property um, and you want to keep your property and protect your investment, chances are that your valuation in 2006 versus your valuation in 2011 and the, and the loan to value available today, you're probably going to have to come up with cash from your own pocket to put the equity now that you did not put in last time when you only went with 10% down and built a nice, beautiful um, Hilton Garden or whatever hotel you built up. On that property, perhaps the loan extension, short-term loan extension is, is the only, well, one of the one of the primary options of it. No, no, but okay, that, 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 I mean, those, all the solutions that we talked about are solutions that are available. Question is, what is the bank willing to do with you? And, 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 uh, and my, my 
my suggestion to the to, to our audience generally is to tell let your bank no. Trust me, I want you out of my property. I want to get you refinanced, but look at my numbers today. You won't lend me money, so you have to give me two years, three years, so that I can get this property up to a level where I can get out of your get out of your or of your bank relationship. But but th there is one other option, which is if you can come up with enough cash so that you can get a new loan from a third a different lender. Your original bank may be willing to take a discounted payoff yes. for all cash right now, yes. today, rather than worrying about whether they're going to have to foreclose. So if you can come up with the cash, your best alternative might be figure out what you need, figure out what kind of loan you can get, figure out how much cash you can have, and then negotiate with your bank a discounted purchase, a discounted payoff of your current loan, and see whether that's a better alternative for you than simply, you know, refinancing or extending. What type, of, what type of discounts are available? You know, it depends. It's the same story. I mean, basically, you have to convince the bank that they wouldn't get any more if they foreclosed and they sold the property now. So it depends on the amount of your loan and the value of the property. But the bank may be willing to share in the decrease in value if you show them that what you're offering is as good with no risk as what they'd get if they foreclosed and they had to carry the property for some period of time, put in cash, take the risk of the market, take the risk of who would buy it. So it's really a matter of trying to help to, to share, the, share the pain, but in a way where you're kind of sharing equally and not, or you know, somewhat close, fairly, I would say, and not asking the bank to take all of the pain, um, but also not taking it all yourself, because why should you? To facilitate that, the appraisal is, is one of the keys uh, to be looked into. And appraisal with a flag, appraisal without a flag makes a big difference in terms of what bank will be willing to accept, either as a direct reduction in the principal or perhaps a little bit a better vehicle is the short sale approval, whereby because of the appraisal, a uh, short sale approval is a little bit more uh, efficiently handled than trying to negotiate a direct reduction. No, I, I agree, but it, it, it all goes back to what Timmy was saying. He, you, you, you walk into the bank and say, listen, here's my, I have a $5 million loan. I have this X, Y, and Z person. He's, he's bringing a check for $4 million. Can you please accept it and let me out of my property and, and let me out of the guarantees? May, may, you know, that, that absolutely works. And it has been working up till now uh, because cash is king even for the banks. Well, and it's also the case that sometimes under the franchise agreements, property improvement plans get triggered by a sale. So when the bank, if a bank forecloses and goes to resell it, the bank's buyer is going to discount the price by anything they're going to have to put in on the property improvement program. Yes. And you don't have to take that hit um, because you're not transferring right. the property. So it may be that you can persuade the bank that your $4 million is better than they would get if they foreclosed and sold it on the open market. Well, this has been great. Thank you. Uh, we've run out of time. So uh, I want to thank my guests, Kirtan Patel and Ankar Sharma and Timmy Hallam. Uh, great information today. I think it's helped our, our members quite a, quite a bit. I'm Chip Rogers for the AHOA Educational Experience. If you have any further questions, you can email me, chip at ahoa.com. That's C-H-I-P at A-A-H-O-A.com. We'll be back next week with a lot more. Thank you.